Hi there guys and girls. We're just performing a ETM test, Volvo's famous ETM test, which is available through Vita interface. And it's using the dice testing system and our Vita interface software. Um, installed to a laptop and this is how we get into the uh, the Vita test we go into vehicle communications highlight ETM module right there and then we go into the first tab which is parameters now while performing this test it's pretty important to observe our battery voltage we've got 12.1 which is it's okay it's healthy you know if it's dipping below 11.5 you'd want to charge up the battery and redo the test again this is our ETM test available here now this particular ETM I'm just going to drag it across so I can still see the battery voltage while we're doing the test. This is important because if we have a battery drop during the test, we can pretty much consider the test to be invalid. Now, this uh, ETM has got green status light, meaning we can perform the ETM test. It's got updated current software, 2006 or later. Um, then we click the ETM test button, turn ignition off and back on and then before the unit powers down again we click start test now this particular ETM is reporting quite badly we've got a, a maximum difference of 65 degrees and you can see that our bar graphs yellow versus blue is quite markedly different now, the software picked up that there was a 65 degree difference on startup. It's not so marked. We've probably got about a one degree difference there, the peak of the graph there. Now, just going over to the unit, and what we will do is we will observe our battery voltage. Yeah, we're still on a healthy 12.1. So, as it approaches, It's an automatic test, so it's it's operating the throttle valve. You can see that this unit is not happy when it's at its first operating phase, which is close to idle. Uh, it's just not able to read the films properly at low throttle openings. But, yep, and audibly complaining there. She, she's not happy. So this unit should respond to a um, a uh, a SASA style um, repair. Uh, we also scanned this unit and found that there were no uh, scans, no um, no CELs caused by the ETM. Uh, it. This particular ETM came from a, a 2.4 T5 out there. We're testing it in a 2001 XC, which uses the same type of um, programming. And that makes us uh, pretty certain that this one will turn out fine after the, the refurbish. And that test looks like it's concluded because the throttle flap is no longer operating and it uh, software's just just completed its phase and we got a I'll just go back in we got a maximum now this is this is not typical uh, 77.57 is not a typical ETM um, 
value. I mean, I've seen I've seen them go to twelve percent, thirteen percent, fifteen percent when we've got really worn films. Um, I've never seen one very that much. That's quite extreme. So we're going to do this test just one more time. Ignition off, ignition on, start the test. We've already got a max difference of 76, so one of, one of the uh, films is really slow to respond right at the beginning of the test. I think what happened there is we got the blue line. Wow. And again, you can hear that. I don't know if you can hear that, but she's complaining. Yeah, 76.04. Let's just check our battery voltage. Because I'm having hassles with keeping this battery charged up in this car. It looks like it's due for a new one, but anyway, yeah, it's just dropped to 12. See, I think, I think when, I, th I think when um, part of the, f the, one of the test phases of this test is to quickly apply a massive increase in throttle angle, and this is where it just can't respond. And that's where you see these blue and black lines going up, but there's no green line to match. And there you can see the difference between that and that is about, oh, that's about hard to say, depending on what the scale is, but that's about 15 degrees there, difference, and 15 degrees again. Now we'll, I might cancel this test and then we will do another video. Once we've refurbished with a um, SASA sensor on the same ETM, and we'll might post that result up as well. And thanks everyone for watching. Cheers. Hi, back again. So we're in the same vehicle, uh, testing the same ETM, and this is post sensor change. Just going into the ETM test now, kick it off. <laughs> right off the bat we've only got a 0.4% or 0.69% peak difference. The bar graph looks totally different. We got a different shape um, happening last time. I haven't heard the ETM make that jittery noise when it gets to the beginning of its throttle travel. So that seems to have been cured. The coincidentally, the film I pulled out of this ETM had um, the classic wear on both strips. Uh, I haven't got the strip here. In fact, I, when this test finishes, I may just race over and put that film in front of the camera. And you can see that this, yeah, there's none of that jittering going on. No noise, no jittering. It's got a nice clean signal. And I think that that test is is over because it's at the, I think they do four cycles. I'm just going to race over. Be sorry about the the bad camera movement. We do have the film over here. I don't know if we can get that in in shot. No, you need a 
Actually, you need a light source behind the film to catch it. Oh, there we go. Oh, not quite. Not quite getting that in shot. Yeah, I can't quite focus on that. Um, they come up a lot better on a on a camera when you can focus properly. But yeah, so that's it. That's a really good result, and um, another great result for precision. And uh, well, I'm not trying to blow my horn or anything. You know, we do repair a lot of these. And some of them, here we go, test completed, 0.69% difference. That's a lot better than 74%. Cancel the test, blah, blah, blah. Uh, might just do that. One more time. One more for the road, as they say. Okay, there we got 0 0.42, 0 0.63, 0 0.69 max. That's that's a peak value, and our bar graph looks uh, totally different. If I can go back, actually, I'll cancel this test, and I'll go back to. The images, oh, actually, you know what, I'll, I need to save these. Sorry, guys. I need to save at least one screen capture of this. Okay. Yeah, again, it's very, very consistent. Always under one percent. But this is what we're aiming for. We had um, one point three nine volts across the sensor we replaced, and we got exactly one point three nine volts out of the SASA sensor. So that was a that was a perfect result. The opposite uh, sensor, um, its opposite reading was 1.38, so we only got 0 0.01 volt variation, and that's why we can see only only a, a half a degree difference. Um, the SASA sensors are not built to exactly equal each other's output; they they can't get them that accurate. But half a percent is pretty darn good. Okay, so we're just going to save that image, and when we're putting it in, there it is, I'm putting it in this folder. have a quick look at that. Have a look at the differences in in the tests. Wow. That's a hugely big difference. That's a that's a big difference. And again, that's our second test and we got, you know, 46% I got 16% there. I mean, this thing was 32% there, and okay, 0.69. And you can see the bar graphs are very tight, and the green and the blue lines almost follow each other exactly. 
so yeah thank you for watching and um, yeah I hope that that helps with some of the understanding of how to get these these working right um, cheers <laughs>